There's been a great deal of conversation and, of course, news coverage about what is going on in the Ukraine. And like many people out there, I've been part of the community expressing solidarity with the people of Ukraine and calling for all of us to be upstanders and not bystanders to what's going on. And one of the issues that we've been talking about in my classes at American University this week in my intercultural communication classes, we've been asking the question, is the coverage excessive? Is a 24-hour coverage of what's happening in the Ukraine excessive? And I've had some students who have said, it's not enough coverage, we need more. And to be quite honest, the majority of students said that it was too much coverage, but they brought up a point about what kind of coverage was too much that was problematic. They were all in favor of making sure that the story about Ukraine gets out. But like me, they had pointed to some things that I hadn't even brought up to them, but they were thinking, and this is what I want to talk about. I want to look at this news coverage of what's happening in Ukraine from a diversity, equity, and inclusion perspective. One of the challenges that we're seeing is that you see, the student who said that we need more coverage, he was talking about because of the nuclear power aspect of it and so on and so forth. But I said, yeah, that, that's very important. But another student said, well, you know, India was involved in some things relating to, to possible nuclear weapons and the like just a few weeks ago or a week ago, and there was no coverage there. And so I said, more coverage about that is important to talk about. And we definitely need to speak about the humanitarian crises. I mean, when we see women and the children in maternity centers getting bombed and, and these types and schools being bombed, and we notice that Russia is being strategic in terms of bombing areas around airports, but not actually destroying the airports. Like all of this bears more conversation. But where some of my students were frustrated, this is the area where I get frustrated, is the commentary that we see coming from some of these journalists that make it look like the Ukraine, what's happening in Ukraine is something that we should care about because this is a civilized part of the world. And I've seen journalists say everything from this is civilized Europe to these are people who look like us to these are blonde hair and blue eyed people. These people, they are middle class people. I don't know how you determine people are middle class from a picture, right? But people that said that, oh, and look, they have houses and cars. So I'm like, my question becomes, do they not have cars in Rwanda or Congo or Syria or Yemen and some of these other places? And that's where those of us who do this DEI work find a lot of the coverage problematic. And he even saw statements coming out from, from Amija, which I believe is the um, uh, Arab media uh, I could be getting it wrong, but it's AMEJA and it's it's the Middle Arab Middle Eastern Journalist Association, and they were talking about this bias that's there. And there's this idea to do more to humanize the people of Ukraine, where we demonize dehumanize people who come from other places. So when people say we don't expect this to happen in a in, in a civilized Europe, they forget that World War II was fought in a civilized Europe. They forget all of the conflicts that have taken place since then, right? And so. But you're also throwing out the idea, well, we're fine with this happening in Rwanda. We're fine with this happening in Congo or Colombia. Well, we're fine with this. And another aspect that we talked about in my class was the hypocrisy in how some journalists label people fighting for their rights in Ukraine and their freedoms in Ukraine, but look at people in places like Palestine differently. And there was one instance where the same journalist who talked about Kids in Ukraine throwing Molotov cocktails at Russians, talked about them as heroes, talked about kids in Palestine throwing Molotov cocktails as terrorists. Now, this isn't about where you stand on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but it's about are you consistent in your belief that all people on this planet deserve to be free? And if you believe that, then the conversation has to really change. And so what I'm thinking, what I'm hearing on, on Sirius XM, Concerts for Ukraine, and all of these other types of things, I, I appreciate and love the fact that people are calling real attention to what's happening because it should not be happening. And at the same time, it, I think it's fair to say we need to also make sure that those African students can get on those trains to get out, that those Indian students and those, those, those Asian, other Asian students can get on those trains to get out. Because I'm pretty sure that there were some Italian students who got on those trains with no problem. That there were some Polish students who, and some British students who got on those trains with no problem. But we started to see with the evacuations how the racism 
started to come out because when stuff hits the fan, you can always rely on race to pull itself out and, and manifest itself in some way, shape, or form. And this was happening with many people, many Africans who were saying, I've lived in the Ukraine for a decade and I've never had any problems. But when stuff hit the fan, things change. And we should be able to call that out and speak about it as well. And so I believe at the end of the day that not all journalists, but Many journalists have been irresponsible in how they've covered this. And I find myself asking, will they give much attention to areas, other areas that are going on in the world? And let's, let's give another example of this. When we saw some of these stories that uh, Gwen, uh, Gwen Alfo talked about uh, missing white woman syndrome, right? We talked about how white women who get kidnapped or you know, get more coverage. And we saw that some news outlets started to do more to cover other people who are missing. But really, at the end of the day, the default is always going to give is always going to be give is always going to give more coverage to white women who are missing. And we, we see this play out over and over again, this idea of when it hits our community, our loosely defined, but it primarily means white, blonde hair and blue eye, blue eye. We're going to care more. And you know what? One of the things that I brought up in, in my classroom was that we actually even see this in music, right? When Michael Jackson, one of the most anti-racist musicians ever, put out the song, They Don't Care About Us, and he made a statement on anti-Semitism, actually condemning anti-Semitism, he had to pull his records from the shelf because he used the term Jumi and he used the word uh, kike me in the songs. He said, Sumi Jumi don't you black or blue me, kick me, kite me, don't you black or white me. And he was using this statement to talk about the dangers of anti-Semitism. But the record industry made him pull it. And now when you hear the song, they don't care about us, that's muted, right? And so, <clears throat> excuse me. And I found it interesting. Even friends of his, like Steven Spielberg said, I don't know if I could ever forgive Michael Jackson for doing that. But these same record companies have no problem with the putting out music that, you know, nigga this and bitch that and hold that as it relates to how many in the black community who are rappers may speak on these are on these labels. See, that's the hypocrisy there. But it's the same mentality. As long as you're talking about your own, it's all good. We see it again. How did it manifest during the Rodney King riots? People were talking about looting and destroying their neighborhoods and the like. And people were talking, look what's happening in places like Compton and the like. But then as soon as the protests started going out to Beverly Hills, we started seeing tanks come out. Right? Lastly, we do it the same as it relates to coverage of, of, of killings that take place in America. When there's an unarmed police shooting of, of a black person, it's all over the news. People talk about, oh, we got the footage, the Quan McDonald, Turn in, tune in tonight. We got the Eric Garner video, tune in tonight. It's like they're advertising lynchings on these networks in some way, shape, or form. But I remember when a, when a white journalist got killed live on air, somebody walked up to her and just shot her. And I remember news media saying, well, out of respect to her family, we're not going to show the video. Again, many in the media have this mentality of things are different when it's our own. And I started with the Ukraine, but when you look at it from a diversity, equity, and inclusion perspective, we see that on many levels, this manifests itself across all industries. And this is why we should be concerned. So if you're interested in making sure that we're painting an accurate picture, I think that we need to really look at this, really look at how our unconscious and conscious biases manifest themselves in how we talk about these situations and how we report these situations. And if you're a writer, how you write about these situations. If you're somebody who's involved in humanitarian work, how you choose to care more about one area than the other. We're all guilty of this in some way, shape, or form, depending on the issue that affects us. And I believe that we can do better. And so quite honestly, I stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. As I said, this conflict needs to stop and, and more needs to be done to stop it. And I, and I also believe that when you're looking at it from a idea of creating communities where everybody can be understood and celebrated and not tolerated, we also need to do a better job of understanding the nuances of this coverage and how certain populations are getting left out and why they're getting left out and how we may have more sympathy for some groups versus others and if there's an inherent bias that might be with that as well. So once again, I think that we need to be upstanders and not bystanders and we can really do the work to challenge these unconscious and conscious biases so we can have real coverage, real stories, and real sympathy and empathy 
for all people suffering across the world. Because at the end of the day, what language do you cry in? We all cry in the same language. We all laugh in the same language. We all hug in, in, in the same language. And let's make sure that we're giving that same love and beauty to all people throughout the world so we can really build that upstanding, beloved community. Peace.